Hey uh, folks, so tonight I've got yet another quickie, this one on batteries here, for the one, the only, the Game Boy Micro. So last time we were talking about uh, Game Boy Micro batteries, I had basically just given you guys a clip with the uh, rehashed mod battery that I made. And by rehashed, I mean I, I literally just took footage from an old video and then spliced it into a new video. Um, now when I built this it was because I had a micro that didn't have a battery and I had a battery that fit in a micro. I I never intended this to be like the the ultimate battery mod for Game Boy Micro. It's just I literally had this on my desk and it fit. So I went with it. Uh, but this is only a 380 milliamp hour battery which I mean, it's not great, but when you consider OEM batteries aren't really that much either. Uh, I've got two right here. Um, 460 milliamp hour rated and probably the same thing. Wherever it's, yeah, 460 milliamp hours. Um, so yeah, it is smaller, but you know, when you consider the alternative being a completely dead battery that wasn't working, it was still perfectly fine. But anyway, I'm back with yet another amazing invention. I found a uh, battery that should fit quite a bit better. Um, well, I can't take full credit for this. I was browsing Taobao and I found a seller that had these listed. Of course, they had the specs completely covered up and you know they just wanted to sell you a battery. They didn't want to tell you what it was. Um, I, of course, bought it. Uh, <laughs> right away without even thinking about it and uh, after a little bit more research I ended up finding some pictures ended up getting the number off of it and just found the bare cells and then ended up buying those two which I guess worked out in the end because my Taobao order got cancelled because apparently they can't ship batteries which doesn't make sense because I then ordered these and got those shipped just fine <laughs> um, and I've ordered also quite a few well just two at this point, uh, aftermarket replacements. And we're gonna talk about all three of these batteries, compare them, and I'm gonna show you how to make a mod battery with this bigger cell. Now, first off, before I talk about this mod battery, I wanna talk about some of my original cells. Now, like I said, this thing is marked 460 milliamp hours, but you gotta consider the fact that these things are from 2005, which at this point was 15 years ago. Yes, we're getting old. I know, it hurts. I, I actually had to take notes for this video. Um, but anyway, they're not great. I ended up testing my OEM battery that I had been using and thought I was getting decent battery life on. Um, it measured in at a whopping 187 milliamp hours, which showed me that I was indeed not getting great battery life. Um, I just I, I thought these things got shit battery life and that was just the way it was. No, they get way better battery life and I was just I was just used to it like Stockholm Syndrome or something. Um, so anyway, I then tested my uh, 380 milliamp hour battery, you know, to see how that stacked up because I was getting a lot better battery life with this battery, despite the fact that it has a lower listed capacity. Uh, this one was only Rate, um, only measuring 340 milliamp hours. So lower than listed capacity, but still significantly higher than this. Um, I ended up testing another OEM battery that I had laying around, one of these bad boys, and that thing only measured in at 380 milliamp hours as well, um, which again is not the full listed capacity, but on the flip side for a 15 year old battery, that is pretty good. Uh, either way, I'm not happy with any of these three, so let's see if we can't get more battery life into the micro here. Um, so let's first talk about this battery that I ordered. This is <clears throat> just a generic reproduction battery that is meant to imitate the OEM look. I really wish they would stop doing this because, you know, it's definitely not an OEM Nintendo battery, but it'll probably get stuck at customs at some point. Um, I mean, down to the logo and everything, uh, they all have this serial number as far as I can tell, the Y76NB01, whereas the real batteries 
have different serial numbers. I don't know if you can see that, but this is, I can barely see it, Y5U-SBO1 or something. Um, but you can see it's stamped into the OEM battery, whereas it's just printed onto this one. I know there are different styles of OEM, so maybe that's just how some of them were, but my two remaining OEM batteries both have stamped serials. Anyway, bought this. It was actually pretty reasonable at a whopping $8.32 as of right now. I don't actually remember how much it was when I ordered it. Um, and I ran a capacity test on it. Note that it is listed 460 milliamp hours. I actually got 525 out of it. So I don't know if these things measured higher when they were brand new or if this is just modern battery technology proving superior. I'm fairly confident this is not an LMO cell or a lithium manganese battery. I'm fairly certain it's just a regular lithium ion battery, but I have no way of actually testing that. So I'm just speculating at this point, but it shouldn't matter. It's all the same um, as far as the Game Boy Micro is com concerned. The batteries are themselves different, but uh, the charging method, I guess, is and discharge method is similar enough that it's completely fine. The only issue is the low voltage cutoff on these things is a little bit high, so you are losing out on some capacity at the tail end there, but it's not too big. It's not too big a deal. Um, so yeah, I'll throw a link to this battery. It's we're, I'm going to run a test at the end of this video. I haven't actually run a... Um, a time test like you know just plug in a game let it loop see how long it lasts I haven't run one of those yet I will run it at the end of the video and you can judge it for yourself uh, I do got to put a few cycles on it though because it has been sitting for a little while but let's talk about the uh, other battery that I ordered now just go ahead and look at this for a minute and if you don't see anything wrong with this I implore you to go watch some of my other videos because you you should be learning something by now. Um, you should be looking at this 3,100 milliamp hour listed capacity and going, uh, something's not right. And yeah, that is specifically why I bought this battery because it had an absurdly high listed capacity. Now, the listing said it was an 1100 milliamp hour battery. And then when I got it and saw that 3100, oh man, that just made my day. Do you know how, how much longer this thing will last than a 460 milliamp hour capacity battery? Well, as it turns out, fuck all, because it actually measured at the exact same 525 milliamp hours. Who'd have guessed? Um, so I'm fairly certain that these two cells are the exact same cell, just with different stickers on them. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised with how this stuff works. It's not like there's very many people over there manufacturing these cells. They have the exact same length connector, and they both have the wrong connector on them, by the way. So I can't actually plug these into a Game Boy Micro without modifying them. But that's gonna lead me to my next point, uh, which I'll get to in a second. I do still want to cover one more thing. Um, this battery was $13.30, a whopping $5 more than this one for the exact same bullshit. Want to know why it was that much more? Because when you order it, you get a free gift, 24K gold sticker. It says best. I'm going to treasure this for the rest of my life. Uh, <laughs> you also get all this battery adhesive, because, you know, we gotta stick it in the Game Boy Micro. Just never mind the fact that the adhesive is longer than the whole Micro, not even counting the battery compartment. And we also get all these wonderful tools, you know, th these, these pry tools for removing the battery, the suction cup for removing the battery. Um, let's see, these, these Phillips and Torx and Pentalobe screwdrivers for, you know, removing the battery. Come on. Like what? This is such garbage. Don't, don't give people, don't give these people money. All right. If you see shit like this, just move on. I bought it. So you didn't have to, I needed to see how bad it was. And as it turns out, it's basically the same thing, but 
just don't encourage this. This isn't much better with the Nintendo logos, but at least they're not lying about the capacity, you know? They just copied the logo entirely. If you go to the actual listing, it doesn't say that it's, um, you know, a, a 1100 milliamp hour battery. It says it's a 460 milliamp hour battery because that's what this is rated for. And I may have just gotten lucky with the lithium lottery. Um, this one came in this anti-static bag with a screwdriver, which is all you need. I don't know why the other one came with all that extra junk. Anyway, let's talk about the thing that I'm sure most of you guys are here for at this point. Let's talk about this battery. So this is an 802535 standard lithium cell. <clears throat> you can get these reasonably cheap. Uh, I got two of these batteries for less than the cost of this battery, all right? It's a good thing I ordered two though because this one actually arrived DOA and I had to bypass the protection board just to get a reasonable measure of current out of it. Um, and I did actually run a capacity test on this cell and it wasn't that great. It was 679 milliamp hours. But Mako, that's more. That's more than these. Yes, yes it is, but it doesn't live up to the 800 milliamp hours that it states. And I know there are some batteries out there from a different and probably better manufacturer that actually do live up to these 800 milliamp hours uh, listed rating. Or actually, I don't know that. I'm just, I just want to believe that they do. Um, because that's what that seller on Taobao had them listed as. That's, it was upcharging because he'd already, you know, cherry picked the batteries ran the actual full capacity and was giving you ones that actually lived up to the rating. I don't know what brand that was or what ma battery manufacturer. I don't know how to get those. I will leave a link to these batteries, the ones that I bought, assuming they're still up. Um, I can't say I recommend them though, since one of them arrived DOA and even after testing it still didn't live up. Uh, I did want to rule out this capacity just because the battery board is defective and it won't let me output any current or charge it but this one didn't fare much better at 687 milliamp hours granted it is still a hell of a lot more than the 340 that i had here 180 that i had here 380 that i had here so let's see if we can't max out the capacity in our game boy micro now before we get started we need one of two things. Um, I highly recommend if you're replacing your OEM battery, like I did with the original video, just pull the connector off of that battery and splice that in. You'll save yourself so much time and hassle. If you don't want to do that because you just want an extra battery or because you don't have the original battery, don't worry, there's still a solution, but it does involve a little bit more work. You can get these uh, connectors here. Uh, let me see what they're called. These are um, JST PH 1.25 2 pin connectors, and I'll throw a link to that. Uh, they're dirt cheap. I got the uh, 10 pair, so I got the male and the female connectors. 10 pair was less than five bucks, so it's 25 cents per cable. That's nothing and for someone like me I mean I'll actually go through them but even if you just need the one pair that's still only 10 bucks for the 10 pair and two of these batteries which was still cheaper than this anyway um, there is a slight problem though like I said this is the wrong connector I don't know if my phone is gonna pick this up really nicely but on the left here, I have the actual Game Boy Micro battery connector. And on the right, I have the JST PH 1.25 connectors. You can see they're extremely similar, but these little tabs on the side are in different places. So let me put these side by side. And you can see on the OEM connector, 
uh, the tabs are quite a bit lower, closer to the bottom, whereas they're right near the top on the replacement connector. So in my original video, I ended up just filing those off, but I'm thinking we can probably do this quite a bit easier by just taking some flush cutters and cutting the tab. All right, now on the OEM connector, there is also these notches in the corners. If you can barely see that, it's super small. I don't have those on here, and on my last one I ended up filing those in, but I really don't think we need to do that. I think that's just making extra work. Um, I will go ahead and, last time I did take some macro pictures and uh, I made a composite image to try and make that easier for you. I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and throw a link to that. Uh, but anyway, if all went well, we should now be able to plug this in to the micro. And there we go. Yeah. Easy peasy. I'm gonna unplug that for now. You shouldn't pull it just by the connector like that, but or by the wires, you should pull it by the connector, but the connector's recessed, so it's kind of hard to do that. All right, before we even get working on that connector, let's see how this thing fits. So this should fit in here, no problem, and then we'll have plenty of room to splice in our wires. I would need these shorter, but I'm just gonna tuck them in for now. Probably good enough. So on your micro, you'll have to remove this foam from the battery compartment. Mine is just loose in there because I had to peel it up when I had my Game Boy Micro painted and I just never bothered sticking it back down with new adhesive. But once you got that peeled up, it should sit in there nice and flush and it's not going to rattle around because it's actually a little bit tight in there. It's just a hair oversized. Um, but there should still be enough tolerances for it to fit. That being said, I wouldn't leave it in your micro long term, but I think that goes for any system with rechargeable batteries. As long as the battery is removable, you should actually remove it. All right, let's go ahead and trim these down. I'm going to trim red wire shorter than the black wire just so that they're not overlapping and ideally I'd recommend soldering uh, you can just undo this cap on tape that's all this is and then you can solder straight to the board that way you're not splicing wires but that's I don't know that's not 100% necessary. It just results in a much cleaner mod, but we don't need to do that. Just because it's cleaner doesn't mean it's required. All right, and then we'll need to cut this down so that it folds like that. And we need to cut the red wire longer than the black wire on this one. Boom. Boom. And if you're using heat shrink, you gotta stick it on before you attach the wires. I'm gonna use heat shrink because I have some. Not required, but if you're not using heat shrink, you need you do need some other insulation. Uh, but like I said, if you just take this tape off and apply and just solder this on straight to the battery board, then you don't need heat shrink or insulation because when you put the capped on tape back on, that'll be your insulation. All right. I'm gonna 
brand new roll of solder. I don't even have it on my stand yet. I really should put it on my stand. Also, it should be noted that if soldering to live batteries makes you nervous, then uh, you're learning. <laughs> uh, no, it's it's not ideal, but there's really not a whole lot we can do about it. All right, got those nice and tinned. Slide on my trink. And I think I actually cut these a little bit long, so I should double check it. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, but I should. Additionally, we should do an actual mechanical wire splice and not just rely on the solder to hold this connection. But I don't think this is gonna rattle around too much once it's actually, you know, once the battery cover is installed. So I don't think it's gonna make any difference whatsoever. All right. And because I offset that, I don't have to worry about this shorting if I leave it uninsulated, but that is super dangerous and I do not recommend it in the slightest. So we're going to use my heat shrink. Let me just put both those right there. I'm gonna shrink this with heat from my heat gun or from my hot air station. So just a warning, this does make my lights flicker pretty bad. So if you're sensitive to that sort of thing, um, I don't know, maybe look away until you hear the thing go off. So just, just a heads up. Here we go. Okay, it's not flickering that badly, but it's still flickering. I think that's good enough. Okay. Let that cool down for a second. It runs the fan at max to make sure the heating element doesn't overheat. I think it's I think it's actually quite clever. Annoying, but clever. Slide that in there. Right. And it should just be a matter of folding that, folding that, tuck that in. Oh, it's just a hair too long. Not long enough that I'm going to actually go back and fix it. But, okay, there it goes. I can switch it off. And then we'll pop the battery cover on. Now, your battery cover should have a captive screw. Mine doesn't, and mistakes were made, and I lost it. But I have another captive, or not a, not a captive screw, but another screw with the same pitch. I don't put a screw in there. All right. Seems to work. Here is my Pokemon Sapphire. I have a cool boxed copy of Pokemon Sapphire that came with these aftermarket labels. And they're really cool. I ended up making reproductions of them. I think they came out pretty nicely. I put I put them on holographic paper. Anyway, sorry. Let's 
seems to work like normal. I mean, not that I expected otherwise, but... Alright, so the real test, I suppose, is going to be the actual play test, or the time, which I won't be able to get to, not quite yet, but we can at least double check that it charges. Battery should not be fully charged. This end isn't plugged in yet, that's why that didn't come up. Because I wanted to grab the other end of the cable so we can see how this thing is charging. So this meter, just pick this up, really cool thing, is gonna show me at what voltage and what, well, I guess what amperage really, this thing is charging at. So we'll make sure that it's charging at the full rate. And it is not doing that. There it goes. So it's charging at 0.148 amps, which is actually a little bit low for this system. Uh, but that could be just because the battery is near full. Um, a full, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I sound a little bit tired, it's because I'm, well, tired. I think this battery is a little bit lower. Yeah, how's that for low? Oh, how's that for not plugged in? I always despise, because that's recessed, you, the urge to stick a tool in there is great, but you don't want to accidentally short something, short something out. All right, so that's 1.45 amps. It's not even charging. Uh, 0.144. So yeah, same thing. Um, maybe I'm just not used to the numbers on a micro. I know a Game Boy Advance charges at a quarter of an amp. I just assumed it would be similar since the voltage cutoffs and everything are similar. But anyway, uh, I guess this is the point of the video where I say, hey, go make your own. It's going to be pretty sweet. Um, I'm going to try and see about getting other vendors to carry these batteries because I think that would be pretty cool that way I don't have to just send you guys off on AliExpress but given the significantly reduced popularity of the Game Boy Micro over the Game Boy Advance SP battery that I did I don't know if that's gonna happen I can't make any promises um, but I can say go ahead and check the description if something like that pops up, I will definitely link it there. I might even pin a comment at the top of the comment section. But anyway, this is the point where I'm basically done. I'm going to do a little bit more um, tests here on my end, and I'll go ahead and throw them at the end of the video. I'm going to do a um, capacity test, a runtime test, of my original battery, the aftermarket battery that I bought, and the other aftermarket battery that I bought, and then my mod battery, and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at them all together. I'm just I'm just gonna throw a graph up on the screen. So um, anyway, if any questions come up, hit me up in the comments. Um, otherwise, have a fantastic day, guys. Thanks for watching. Oh, just a real quick addendum, because I forgot to mention it earlier. Uh, someone had mentioned that the JST ZH series would uh, would work. Um, no, that is not true. These are an even further from the. Uh, these don't fit at all. These are way off. Now maybe it's a uh, different size that I ordered, and I got the wrong size because these are 1.25, I believe, and these say 1.5. So maybe I just got the wrong size, but these aren't even close. Um, but if anyone does know the correct connector, please hit me up. I would love to know. I assume they don't exist because if they did, the uh, aftermarket batteries would come with the right connector and I wouldn't have to trim these tabs off. But um, 
if I'm wrong, I would love to throw an updated link in the description. Uh, anyway, carry on. <laughs>